As Christians, our moral behavior is guided by the two-part commandment taught by Jesus, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Many of us learn to use this framework as an examination of conscience. By examining our lives through the lens of these commandments, we have learned that the challenge of these commandments is not in our desire to follow them, but in our capacity to consistently honor these commandments in our daily lives. Our entrance in as we gather. It is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord and our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, You may fear the Lord your God, you and your sons and your sons' sons, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, I love you Lord my strength. because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. Since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself, for the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son 
who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, what is more important than anything else? What would we value? above every other thing. The Greek philosopher Plato thought that this was the most crucial question that anyone could possibly ask. In fact, he set up an exercise to determine it. And he asked his students to picture their life as one big triangle and to place at the base of the triangle everything they valued everything that they thought was important or noteworthy. And once that was done, Plato encouraged the students to raise those things that they valued towards the apex of the triangle. Now, of course, as they pushed things up, there was less and less space. And so things that were less important had to be left aside. And finally, when they reached the very top of the triangle, there was room for only one thing. And that thing, Plato said, was the one most important thing. Now, I'm quite sure that Jesus never ever knew of Plato's exercise. And it might seem that if he engaged in it, he would be unable to determine only one thing that is most important. Because when the scribe in today's gospel asks him to pick one commandment, the most important one, the one that would sit at the top of this triangle, Jesus gives two commandments. That we should love God with all our heart and that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. So it seems that Jesus cannot narrow it down to one. But I would suggest to you that this would be an 
accurate understanding of Jesus' teaching. The two commandments that are given are actually two components of one great commandment. Both are necessary. Each is one side of the same coin. And together they form the one great commandment that is most important of all. Since this is Jesus' central teaching, it would serve us well, my dear brothers and sisters, to reflect why we need both of these commandments. Why neither can stand on its own. Or to put it this in other terms, why we cannot love our neighbor without loving God, or why we cannot love God without loving our neighbor. Now let's take the easier question first. Why is it impossible to love God without loving our neighbor? The answer is simple. Unless we are willing to love our neighbor, unless we are willing to give ourselves in service to those in need, unless we are willing to reach out in generosity and in sacrifice, our love of God is nothing else but hypocrisy. If we are unable to love those around us, then our prayer to God and our love of God is empty. If we are unwilling to give of ourselves to others, then our love of God is merely a matter of words or pious practices. It might make us feel good, but it has no substance. It's not based on reality. The first letter of John tells us that those who say they love God but hate their brothers and sisters are liars. Because how could they say that they love God whom they cannot see and at the same time refuse to love their brothers and sisters who they do see? So love of God without love of neighbor is empty. It is hypocrisy. Now how about the other way around? Why is love of neighbor without love of God deficient? Why do we need to love God if we are truly going to love our neighbor? And perhaps this is a more difficult question, isn't it? But the answer is this. Love of God gives us the freedom to love others even when it is difficult. Even when it is not at all practical. It's easy to love those who love us in return. But how can we love those who are constantly hurting us? How can we love our enemies? We cannot love them for their sake, but we can love them for God's sake. We can love them because we love God. The love of God gives us the ability, my dear friends, to love others, to love the earth, even when that love is not reciprocated, even when it produces few results. Our Jewish brothers and sisters call this kind of a love mitzvah. It means it is commanded. We do it because God expects it of each one of us. And we love the God who loves us. This kind of loving, my dear brothers and sisters, is absolutely free. Free from the limitations of our strategies, the limitations of success. We love because God asks us to love. And that love is without any strings attached. Jesus gives us a great commandment. But that great commandment has two essential parts. Love of God and love of neighbor. Both are required. Love of God without love of neighbor is empty. Love of neighbor without love of God is limited to only love which is convenient and practical. But these two loves together, my dear brothers and sisters, form one great commandment. They sit at the very pinnacle of the triangle of life. They are the most important thing and they are our only entry into the kingdom of God. We now profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father of the four ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from me, consubstantial to the Father, 
truly for the history. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and the bonds of Spirit. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the gardens of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one who will be an Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the day and the light of the world to come. Amen. God provides for the needs of His children. As people of faith, we present the needs of our church and the world to our generous Father. And our response will be, Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. All together. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. That the church may always keep focused on Christ and on the mission to proclaim God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations and all in authority may govern with wisdom, understanding, and a special care for the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. That we may have the grace to see and love each other as a neighbor like ourselves, including the unborn, the outcast, the burdensome, the stranger, and the criminal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. That the deceased members of our families may be welcomed into the presence of God's love for eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. For the intentions we now pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear these prayers which we bring to you from the depths of our hearts. Answer us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offer to him, take thou the offering. May be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our God and all His holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. 
For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right begins your praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy. These gifts be brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command that we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession, in your presence, be alive for unfailing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, 
Francis Sampo, Pidoos Vildar Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now to temptation. But deliver us, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our Lord and Lord, 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 Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all for each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the old king, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who hold the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces 
you have given me through this spiritual communion. For God so loved the world. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O oh Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I just to him, we are happy Christians. We are happy Christians.